I'm back. I have something else to fix for you guys today. This was going to be a real easy one, though, because there's really not much wrong with this thing other than the fact that the light bulb in behind the uh, liquid crystal display on this Pro 2004 uh, Radio Shack uh, scanner is uh, burned out. So we're going to open this unit up and we're going to um, replace the light bulb. But anyway, so to get into this thing we've got to take the screws out of it. And these scanners open up fairly easily. There's typically just uh, four screws in the back and the whole unit should just slide right on out. It looks like this one's had a few modifications done to it. I see some wires and stuff coming out of the back here. The radio should just slide through, slide out from the cabinet. Just like that. We need to get into the display which is below this portion of the uh, the radio so we need to take out two more screws on either side here to remove the front panel should just lift panel. off like it does. And we need to get in behind the display. This is the display unit here. <clears throat> so we can just unplug the front panel from the rest of the unit. Except, I don't know that all these plugs uh, act, uh, all these uh, controls are actually pluggable, but I really only care about this piece here and this board unscrews. There are one, two, three, four, there are five screws that hold this board in place. So let's take out these five screws. So now we've got the display board out. And we have to find where the backlight is on this thing. And the backlight is, oh, okay. This one is an electroluminescent panel, it looks like. Not a, not a, um, not a conventional, uh, um, not a conventional um, LED or, LED or, or uh, incandescent bulb, as most of them are. This is it here. This is an electroluminescent panel. It's driven with a high voltage. This is a little transformer that generates a high voltage. They typically have about 100 and 120, 130 volts on here. It's much like those night lights. That as you, you can green. see, I've, I've had to pull out the big guns. I've had to pull out the silly scope for this thing. We're looking at the output of the transformer. This drives the um, electroluminescent panel. And we're on... Um, we're on 100 volts per division right now, or well, 10 volts, and I'm on a 10 times 10 scale. So we got about 100, 200, about two, almost 300 volts peak to peak here, coming off that transformer. That uh, should be driving that display. So we're going to reconnect that display and see if I've got any light. If we don't have any light coming off the electroluminescent panel, then well, we know what the problem is. It's the electroluminescent panel that's that's shot. But the, the oscillator is working and there's the output of the transformer, so we should have light coming off that panel. Once again, we find ourselves sitting in the dark. The problem with this is it's the electroluminescent panel that's shorted. I can prove this by taking one of these old night lights, these little green eye night lights, which are an electroluminescent panel, and I can connect it onto the transformer and you'll see that it lights up. So we know the circuitry. The circuitry and the, uh, the scanner that's working. The oscillator's working. The transformer's working. What's happened is this electroluminescent panel has shorted. Probably from that um, glue that they use to adhere it to the panel. I'm gonna see if I can clean it off. I think it's, it, it's probably shot internally and uh, we have to try and find another panel or find some other way to light this uh, display up. We could certainly do it with an incandescent or an LED type light, uh, but um, this panel itself here is toast. We know that the problem is the panel. 
we were able to prove that the problem is the panel. Um, one, I used a scope to measure the voltage, and then two, I just confirmed it by substituting another electroluminescent panel. We know where the problem is. We know what the solution is. The problem is just maybe we may not be able to get one of these panels because of the age of the unit, but we're going to try and work on this problem and see if we can solve this and get this scanner back working like it was when it was new. It should not have any resistance whatsoever between the electrodes. And this one here is measuring 18K. 18K between the wires. It should be uh, infinite resistance. What makes an electroluminescent panel work is essentially it's, it's two electrodes. They are transparent electrodes with a layer of phosphorus between them. And as the, as the uh, current passes through the phosphorus, it makes it glow. You can see here's one of the electrodes here. You can see the stripe down the front here. This is one of the electrodes and the other electrode is connected to the back here. Uh, so somewhere along the line, either moisture has gotten into this or where that glue was applied to the end here. It, 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 uh, somewhere along the line, something has caused this panel to short. This is an obsolete part and we're not going to find another one unless we find a used one. So I'm, I've been brainstorming here and I'm thinking what might work is if I backlight this with LEDs. I'm thinking put some white paper in behind the display maybe make it like a V shaped running in behind the display and then I can fire some blue LEDs or green LEDs or whatever bright nice bright LEDs down light up the uh, piece of paper and that will provide plenty of illumination that's at least what our attempt is going to be to get this display uh, so that you can read it in the dark so that's that's our project up oh, there my lights finally starting to come up to full brightness here so we can get some better pictures and uh, I can see what I'm doing but that's that's in a nutshell what I'm going to be working at here on this one for the next little while anyway to try and get something in behind this display that will provide enough reflectivity so that I can put a couple of lights fix a couple of little LEDs down the top here to light up the display as I've put a piece of white paper behind the display and the idea is I'm going to shine some LEDs down behind here to light this up and that should provide more than enough light to read the numbers that are on here once it's reconnected and uh, running okay guys I've been you know I've been pondering over what to do about this electroluminescent panel um, over the past couple days my first attempt was to make a light array out of some LEDs and that probably would have worked had these been diffused LEDs but they are just two directional so what I ended up with is I ended up with bands of bright and then the rest of it was dim so that won't do and I've been pondering over what to do because I can't find any source of an electroluminescent panel for this I think what I've got the answer here now this is an LED light strip they're white LEDs and because they're they're on a sticky back I can stick them in behind the display and that should provide enough light I've got a, a piece of paper in behind here to diffuse the light that should be enough now these light strips they sold in like one foot lengths and longer but I got a one foot strip here and you can cut them every three LEDs so I obviously I don't need this whole strip I just need a strip of three so I'm gonna cut the LED right here at the cut point there's actually a little mark it's, it's, it's hard to see it doesn't show up very well on camera but there's a little mark here where I can cut this so I'm gonna cut it right on the strip well, that was rather rude, wasn't it? My memory card ran out just as I cut my strip. Anyway, we remove the silicone protective coating and expose the circuit board underneath. These are our solder tabs where we can solder on our wires to feed power. 
Uh, these little units operate off of 12 volts, so using my, because I can't find my razor blade, I did have a razor blade around here, it would be perfect just for this. But I've got these little pair of Klein, I think they're Klein, yeah, Klein snips, these are great little electrician's scissors, and uh, they just, they do wonders for everything, like cutting, they, I used them, I used it like this to cut down through the silicone, because they're, they're sharp as anything, and they have a serrated edge. So you can you can use these things to cut through just about anything, and this will cut through steel. Well, not heavy steel, but it'll cut through uh, it'll cut through like like tin, like 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 for example, believe it or not, like this 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 metal case, I could cut this case with these snips. I'm not gonna, but I could. They are extremely sharp and virtually indestructible. So I'm just going to uh, file down the protective coating here and hook up my wires hook up my power wires here put a little bit of heat shrink around here and then we're going to work at getting these uh, lights in behind this display. I got to take the unit apart again. I had it apart but uh, I put it back together when uh, I couldn't get uh, an electroluminescent panel, so we have to tear this down again. No big deal. We're going to get the lights working. We're going to tear that down. We're going to stick this in behind here and make the display work. Make the owner of this piece of equipment a very happy camper indeed. What I did is I, I, I cut away a piece of the plastic support that was once holding the electroluminescent panel in place on this side so that I can slide the light assembly in behind and I've got a piece of paper in behind this display which will diffuse the light so now we're going to take the display and I'm, I'm not even going to peel the backing off the little lights just yet because I don't know if they're positioned quite right but I'm going to place the circuit board back into the cabinet here and we'll connect it up and uh, and see how it looks So now we've connected our our, um, our light source to power. I just need to connect the display now on the bottom side to the electronics. So we bring our connector around and we plug it back into the interface connector here. And in the next couple of minutes, once I get power on my bench, Okay, so we have lights. Now, as you can see, they're not quite centered. We're going to have to uh, work that centered down, but I think that that probably will, will give them plenty of light, at least to see this display in the dark. I can read it now, so I think that we're, we can call this project a success. I just need to center these lights on the panel and uh, if I can get them right in behind the displayer, I think we can uh, safely say I'm going to stick another piece of paper in here as well to diffuse it a little more. I think we can say that this this um, this one will be a success. I've got my light display in here. I'm just going to diffuse the, the lights a little more by just uh, cutting a few more little sheets of paper. And we're going to stuff them down in between the display and the LED um, light source itself. And this will further... Uh, diffuse the lights so that they're not quite as harsh and this will soften it down a bit again if I turn out the lights in here completely you should be able to see the display so I've turned off the main lights I'm just going to kill the last light here so we can get this in total darkness and if I zoom the camera in on here you should be able to read the display no problem diffuse the light a little more now I haven't put the display panel back in but um, it, the camera doesn't show it doesn't do it justice um, but looking at the display it's much easier to read on the display than it is looking at it on the camera um, 
camera tends to pick up a little more of the light leakage here but as you can see here the uh, the display is very readable I'm in total darkness here and the display is very readable there we have it as you can see I'm sitting here in absolute darkness now so we're going to uh, button the unit back up I'll give you a final look at it once it's put back together and so there we have our um, Pro 2004 back together it's now got an LED light source as opposed to the failed electroluminescent panel still a couple little warm spots on here but uh, other than that uh, it looks good